Today I'll be challenging the way that you use the internet. And since you're here on my video on YouTube, I will make the bold assumption that you know a little bit about how to browse the web. And since you know how to browse the web, obviously you've been using Google for the last couple of years or couple of decades, depending on your age. And again, going back to the fact that you're on my channel, you're probably also a little bit interested in artificial intelligence, which makes me believe that you've also tried ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, or any of the other large language models out there. Now, the tool I wanted to introduce you to today is called perplexity.ai. Perplexity.ai is something of a hybrid between a traditional search engine like Google or Yahoo, if you're a hipster, and large language models like ChatGPT or Claude. And the great thing is that it brings the best of both worlds in one very convenient package. So today we're gonna dive deep into this tool and all I can say is I'm a little upset with myself that I haven't tried it earlier on. But anyways, let's jump into perplexity.ai and give this thing a shot. And the first thing you realize is that you don't even need an account to start using it. It looks a little bit like Google, where you have a huge search field in the middle of the screen. So let's just use it like we would do Google. So let's type in our question. In my example, I'm gonna be asking it about what nanotechnology is, and I don't know too much about it. So I'm here to learn every single day. So let's give that a shot. And there you go. You got yourself an article looking answer to your question about what nanotechnology is. And I know what you might be saying. You might be saying, well, this kind of looks like an answer that you would get from ChatGPT. And yeah, kind of you're right. But notice that at the top of the screen, you'll see a number of links to answers related to the question. And the way perplexity works is that it pulls out the most relevant articles from the internet and it pulls that information together from those links into a coherent answer that you see right below. And at the bottom of the page, you'll also see more on this section, which gives you follow-up questions that you might ask perplexity to better get into the topic of what you're talking about, nanotechnology in my case. So let's go back to the list of links at the very top and you'll see that they're all very much related to the topic at hand. One of them is what is nanotechnology and what can it do? So a perfect result to our search. So if you are not satisfied with the information that you're getting from the review, then you can feel free to jump into one of those links. Now, if you click on the view to more button, you'll see that you get a whole list of all the articles and information and links that the article was built upon. But now let's try one of those follow-up questions. So I'll ask the first link, how does nanotechnology improve the efficiency of solar cells and batteries? And again, you get a new article and a whole lot of links at the top. And do notice that in parts of the text in the article that Perplexity has built for us, you also see little buttons of one, two, three, four, etc. So those are links to the actual articles that this information has been built upon. So this is basically a bit of fact checking for your information, a very handy tool in my opinion. Now let's look at a couple of other tools within Perplexity. So you also have the button called Rewrite, and once you tap on that, you will see a list of different large language models. And one of them is Claude 3.5, Claude 3, ChatGPT 4.0, and Sonar Large. And then the one at the very top is ProSearch. Now well, that's a little bit different because this will allow us to use the Pro feature of Perplexity to give us a slightly better answer to our question. So if you click on any of those large language models, you will see that you get a little pop-up in the middle of your screen, which says that you need to upgrade your account for $20 a month. And I don't want to do that. Today, I want to show you the free capabilities of perplexity.ai so you can start using it for free today. But what you will realize is that in the free version, you get unlimited quick searches, which is the ones we just did right now, and you get five pro searches per day. So let's go back to our pro search and see how it compares to the original version. So I'll click on rewrite pro search. And as soon as we click that, we realize that there's a bit more happening under the hood. So it gives us information about what kind of operations it's running. So first of all, it's find how nanotechnology improves the efficiency of solar cells. And then the next step is find how nanotechnology improves the efficiency of batteries. So it runs those two searches in parallel and gives us the relevant information right after. So you can see its thought process a little bit, and then it shows you what it's reading, that it's reading some science direct and research gates and understanding nano websites, which I don't know, but apparently 
those are relevant to nanotechnology. I mean, it does sound like it. So it's doing a bit more reading now and a bit more searching and combining all that information together. And it gives us this beautiful article about solar cells and batteries. And then it gives us a list of articles, actually a slightly longer list than previously, and including some PDFs to some scientific research, which is pretty good evidence of what we're talking about here. And one other thing that I wanted to show you is the share feature. And if you click share, you get a little link copied pop up on your right hand side. And that means that you basically have the link and you can send it over to your friends. And just to show you that it works perfectly, I'm going to go into an incognito tab on my web browser and open the link in there. And as you can see, it even shows you who's actually done the search. So you can see that it's Basil, which is me. So if you found something interesting in perplexity, you can send it to your friends and have a discussion about it with them, which is pretty handy, especially if you're doing some school or university research. So this was very, very good for our research purposes, but let's see if it's actually any good for personal use. So what I'm gonna do is ask it to plan out a trip for me to Indonesia for 30 days. And I'm gonna use the Pro Search feature as well because it just gives us such great answers. So let's see the thought process first. And you'll see that first is doing a research on popular destinations and activities in Indonesia, which it also gives you the search queries that it does for Google or whatever search engine it uses. So there's popular destinations in Indonesia, top activities in Indonesia. And then from the other steps that we see, we've got plan a 30 day itinerary for a trip to Indonesia, estimate the total costs for the 30 day trip to Indonesia, and finalize the 30 day Indonesia trip plan. So for each of those steps, it's gonna do a separate search and research and give us the full article afterwards. So let's see what it does. All right, beautiful. It even gives us a couple of photos on the site so that we can actually get an understanding of what we've pulled ourselves into. And then it gives us a list of activities to do. So the first three days will be Jakarta, which is the capital, and then Yogyakarta, which is relatively close by and it splits up the day into chunks of what we need to do in each of them. Then it gives me the budget and travel tips and estimated cost. And then it gives us a number of follow-up questions to our trip plan. Like what are the must see places in Bali? How can I experience the local culture in Indonesia? And what are the best times of year to visit Indonesia? Which is quite important since it's raining half the time. So let's try the Bali one. And again, we get a list of articles to read through and a list of things to do. So it seems like it's pretty good at research, but it's also pretty good at doing random searches that you would do on Google. So it just makes me believe that perplexity can replace Google in a lot of cases, and it can actually do a lot of the work that I would have to do myself if I Googled stuff for me. So it's actually not just a standard large language model, but it's actually a tool which uses the large language model and web searches and combines the two into a really cool package. All right, the next thing I wanted to show you in terms of searching the web is that you can also define the data sources that you get your information from. And so far we've been using all the different data sources such as Google, YouTube, Reddit, all of them. And what we can do is actually filter out just by one source. So I'm gonna ask it about the predictions for the new iPhone, which is coming out in three or four months. And if you click the focus button, you can actually select where you want the information coming from. So you've got to choose from either all, which is what we've been using this whole time, or academic, or writing, or world from alpha, video, or Reddit. So because I think that Reddit would be a very good source of tech predictions, I'm gonna choose that. I'll make it a non-pro search because I don't want to run out of my tokens, but I think the result should be good enough anyways. And so as you can see at the top, you got a list of different threads in Reddit, which is iPhone 16 Ultra predictions, predictions for iPhone 16, etc., etc. And then it pulls down all the information from those Reddit threads and combines it into one neat article for us. All right, for the next example, we're gonna use just YouTube searches and we're gonna ask about the new Claude 3.5 Sonnet model. So now it pulls out all the different relevant videos for Claude 3.5 Sonnet and pulls down the information from the transcriptions of those videos and, well, links the videos and it gives me a full article. Another cool feature that you'll find in Perplexity is the Discover button in the left-hand side sidebar of the tool. So if you click into that, you'll see it kind of looks like a news application where you get a number of different articles ready for you to read. 
And the cool thing is that it's actually information brought to you from the internet about what's trending right now. And then Perplexity builds articles around those topics. So let's go through that list together and we'll see what's out there. So Meta's threads surpasses 175 million active users, 12,000 year old Aboriginal ritual, nuclear powered data centers, China's brain computer interface plans. All right, so those are all quite interesting topics to read up on. Let's look at the new AirPods may have cameras. And what I wanted to show you is that those are AI generated articles which do include images and they do include also links to actual articles from the web. I can prove to you that this is all AI generated and not built by humans because if we select text from any of the articles like I'm doing right here and go to websites such as GPT-0, which is actually a useful tool because it will tell you if a piece of text is AI generated or not. So we'll paste it in here and check origin and you can see that it's 100% AI generated. So there you go. Those are not human written articles. So it's kind of cool that there's a tool which builds content on its own and probably doesn't need a lot of human intervention. So that was perplexity.ai for you and I hope it's as interesting to you as it is to me and that you'll give it a shot because it seems like a pretty decent tool. And in the meantime, feel free to check out any of my other videos about large language models over here. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.